What's going on guys, Magdalen here with another Last Epoch video. Today I'd like to talk about my feelings about whether or not the Last Epoch endgame system is fun. Is it something that I'm going to be spending hundreds and hundreds of hours grinding? Or am I just going to level another character or maybe set the game aside until they make some changes in a future patch? As a couple caveats, obviously this isn't a compare and contrast video with Path of Exile, but there's going to be some of that because my main game is Path of Exile. And I'm really only going to be talking about the Monolith system. There are dungeons in the game, as well as an arena wave-based system. But those are not the type of content that I enjoy. I am a traditional PoE map blaster. And the Monolith system is the type of content that most resembles that gameplay style. Another thing is, I'm not playing a character that's Giga min-maxed. I thought that it made more sense to share my thoughts about this when I was kind of in the thick of the endgame progression. I'm in Empowered Monoliths. I'm doing the corruption grind and so it made the most sense I think to make this video at this time as opposed to later in progression. I've structured this, I've got three pros and three cons. Three things I like, three things I don't like very much. And then I will kind of round things out at the end. So let's start with the things that I think are really good about the system. The first thing is there's no map rolling. You're not doing the thing like in Path of Exile where you have to accumulate 100 maps and then put 400 chisels on them and then 100 alchemy orbs. And then you might have to use a bunch of scouring orbs and find the mods that you need. And this can take a lot of time, it's tons of clicking, and it's probably my least favorite part of the endgame system in Path of Exile. And that's totally absent here. You just click and go, and when you complete a monolith, the portal system is really snappy. You're out of it really quickly and grabbing your loot and you're into the next one. I, I love that part of it. The next thing that I think is really great is the bossing. You basically encounter one of the main bosses for the monolith zones pretty infrequently. I know that you can speed that process up via corruption and maybe later in progression it'll get to the point where you're doing those bosses frequently enough that they start to get stale. But at least in the 100, 115, 20 hours that I have played so far, I feel like they're spread out far enough that when I encounter them it's like, okay, it's time to do a boss battle. And the mechanics are pretty interesting, they're fun to work around. There's some challenge there, but the telegraph system is relatively fair, and I feel like I can learn the boss and then skill around a lot of the mechanics, even if my damage is a little bit low, even if my defenses aren't quite there, and I've had a great time doing the bosses. And then the other thing that I think is really good is that there's no XP loss on death, and so even if you're struggling, I've always felt like I'm progressing my character. And again, I guess to compare it to Path of Exile, when I've had, you know, a roommate or a friend get into the game, it's actually really easy in Path of Exile to get to a point where if you can't kill the mobs, you and you can't get, you know, 20 or 30% XP between deaths, you can get to a point where you're not really getting any items, you're not getting any map completion or currency drops, and then your character is literally not gaining any power whatsoever. So you're stuck. You either have to go to a lower tier map or as has been the case with most of the people that I've got into the game, that's the point where they start asking questions like, well, what do I do now? And you get the impression that they're a couple steps away from, you know, switching to another game. In Last Epoch, as I said, you just always feel like you are incrementally moving towards the next level of character power. And it gives you the sense of, okay, I might be struggling right now, but if I just kind of push through, I'll get another level, maybe two levels, I can grab some more damage, grab some more defense, and then we'll see how it goes from there. And I think that's a really good way for them to have set things up. And then moving on to a few of the things that I do not like as much about the system. I actually don't enjoy the itemization as much as I thought I was going to based on my experience doing the campaign a couple times. The legendary potential system I think just doesn't, it's not there yet, it doesn't feel very good to me. I'm not inspired to farm for the same item over and over and just hoping that I get this one or two legendary potential affix. There's a lot of moments where an item drops and you get excited and then you look at it and it, and then immediately you're disappointed. Oh, the grind continues. Um, and there's no way that you can add legendary potential to an item. I think maybe if they let you do like a vendor recipe where if you had three of the base item, then you could get one with one LP. You know, if you had three of them with one LP, you could get an item with two LP. I think that would smooth out the edges a little bit. They could maybe leave three and four LP as, you know, giga rare, drop only, you know, chase items. But it would be nice if there was a more deterministic way that I could engage with upgrading those unique items. 
and again, it's a it's a thing that kind of leads to moments of excitement followed immediately by disappointment. Another thing I haven't enjoyed as much is a thing that I call difficulty by swarm spam stun. And this is where, as you progress into higher difficulties, you don't really encounter anything new. They just add more swarming mobs that jump on top of you and kill you, or tons of ranged mobs that just shoot stuff at you that you can't really dodge. I mean, you, you can get out of the way of projectiles, but there's a little bit of, like, magic bullet stuff going on. And I find that, for example, you can get to lots of spots where there's ranged mobs that are, you know, at the bottom of an area, and you can't actually jump over to get to them, but they can still shoot at you. Stuff like that that I think probably will get smoothed out over time. And then the stun mechanic seems a little bit weird to me. In Path of Exile, it's much more clear in the sense of if you take a certain amount of your health as damage, then you're going to get stunned. In Last Epoch, I often find myself just kind of losing control of the character, and I haven't taken any damage yet. But of course, once I get stunned, then everything jumps on you, as I said, the swarm and spam mechanic. And then that is often where I die, and for me, that's been a little bit frustrating. Obviously, this is 100% subjective, it's just my experience, but that I feel like maybe if there was a a more creative way that they increase the difficulty. Obviously, the game does not have the development time of Path of Exile underneath it, and so you're not going to have as many league mechanics to engage with, so on and so forth, but it would feel better to have some mechanism at play that wasn't as simple as, now there's more dogs that jump on you, now there's more mobs that throw lightning at you from you know the bottom of a, of a hill or whatever. And then the last thing is the map and monster variety itself sort of gets a little bit stale, especially since the way that you would farm for specific items is to just focus on one of the timelines in the monolith system. And so that kind of reduces the variety even more. And so a lot of the maps actually feel kind of repetitive. You're kind of just off and running and then you find a little sort of node that you have to kill that doesn't really do anything or you just run to a certain spot and then click on a thing and then it spawns a bunch of mobs and you kill them and that is beginning to grate on me as i continue running through the the system i do like the way that in path of exile you know regardless of the fact that depending on which patch you're talking about the map bosses are sometimes they're way too strong sometimes they're not strong enough sometimes there's rare monsters that are more challenging than the bosses and maps, but generally speaking, I like the idea of that each zone has its own boss with its own set of mechanics that you have to deal with, and I'd like to see Last Epoch lean you know, more into that. And as I said, the quest objectives themselves can get kind of boring, and the blessing system, I think, actually contributes to this in some way, because you're incentivized to just do the same you know, single timeline over and over and over until you can get the correct blessing. And they even have, you know, roles that you have to get. So even if you get the blessing that you want, it might not be, you know, of a tier that's high enough that it's the one that you want. So I know that, for example, you can get resistances, but if you need to use it to basically cap a resistance, you might have to do the same zone many, many times before you can get enough resistance from that blessing to have made it worth your time. And so, in summary, I, I think that the end game is really promising considering how new the game is and how they have been pretty open about the fact that they've been focusing on multiplayer and we've got trade coming, which is going to, I think, alleviate a lot of the itemization problems, obviously. And, but as it stands now, I think that the game is strongest when you are just making character after character and blasting through the campaign. Last Epoch has a fantastic campaign. It's probably, in my opinion, the best action RPG campaign that I've ever played. And I don't have the same type of trepidation when I think about making another character as I do in Path of Exile, where it's like, okay, do I have to get a set of leveling gear and then just go through the same rigmarole again of playing a, you know one of two or three different skill archetypes that actually feel good leveling and then maybe I can switch into my preferred build as I move along. In Last Epoch, the pacing that they have for how your skills level up and how you're able to specialize into different skills and, you know, explore those trees, it feels really good while you're leveling up. 
And so I think the game is best played right now where you're just trying the different classes, trying out different builds, and then, you know, maybe dipping your toes into the end game. But for me, it just isn't to the point yet where it has that addictive blasting quality that a game like Path of Exile has. And I would still say 100% give the game a go. At, at 35 bucks, it's 100% worth it. It's just that I don't think that we're to the point yet where it's got that that pizzazz that something like Path of Exile has at the end game. And that's about all I've got for you guys today. If you found anything interesting or engaging in the video, please do give me a like and a subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. I appreciate you.